Good morning, good morning, everyone. I'm Hank Philippi Ryan, uh, and we're live here on Instagram for this morning's edition of First Chapter Fun. I'm still waiting for Facebook to come on. I'm not sure I'm live on Facebook yet. This is always, I think there I am, um, this is always the time of morning, every Tuesday and Thursday at 11.30 a.m., where Hannah Mary McKinnon and I not only read the first chapter of a new book out loud, but see what new fun Facebook and Instagram have in store for us as we try to talk here on Instagram and here on Facebook at the same time and see if the technology will work for us. So I see Tracy and Glennie and Jen, hooray, on Instagram. So I know I'm here on Instagram and am I here on Facebook? Um, that would be fun to see. So let me know if you are seeing me on Facebook or whether we are having yet again another little battle on first chapter fun um, with technology. I see you, Carla, on Facebook. Hooray. Wonderful. So we are underway, and that is great. I'm Hank Phillippe Ryan, um, as always, on Thursday at 11.30 a.m. with Hannah Mary McKinnon, reading you the first chapter of a brand new book, not our own, not, not usually our own, but sometimes our own, okay, when our, when our books come out every year. So I'm so pleased to see you, Kimmer and Sharon. Oh, that's so nice to see you. Um, and Amisha Quips, are you new? Yay, yay, yay. I don't know how to pronounce your handle, but hooray, we welcome you. And on uh, Facebook, there's Daisy and Lynn and Glennie. So nice to see you all. How are you? Hi, Kimmer. Um, are you okay with the weather? Is anybody, I know we must have people in Louisiana and Texas and in the Gulf Coast who are facing this hurricane. Um, how are you doing? Are you okay? Do you have relatives there? Have you left? town. This is so very worrisome. I'm here in Boston, so I don't think we're having storm today like that, but we, it is supposed to pour down rain, so that will be interesting. So I, you know, I read somewhere this morning that the worst possible purchase of the year was a 2020 planning calendar, um, because what a waste of time that is to purchase this year. We can't plan anything except that Hannah Mary McKinnon and I will be here every Tuesday and Thursday morning here on Facebook, here on Instagram to read you the first chapter of a wonderful new book. And wow, do we have um, really a special book for you today. Hey Hannah, seeing you on Instagram, we were just talking about the weather and whether people are handling this and whether we have people in um, Louisiana and Texas and the Gulf Coast getting ready to battle this hurricane. Hey, sweetheart. So um, we, I was saying that we have a special new look today. Um, this is, um, we usually read a lot of thrillers and domestic suspense and women's fiction, that kind of historical fiction. Here we have today um, a new book, a new territory for us, which my computer has just decided to. This is, um, we're reading today from Robert J. Sawyer's The Oppenheimer Alternative. Can you see that cover? It's pretty interesting. This is an amazing book by absolutely one of the icons of science fiction world. I'll tell you more about Robert J. Sawyer in a minute, but we're sort of sticking our toe into alternate history today. Um, and that is quite fascinating. So if you're fascinated by science and fascinated by how the world works and fascinated by the possibilities um, of what might have been, Robert J. Sawyer, as you will hear in a minute, is truly um, one of the most iconic writers uh, on the planet. So we are thrilled to be reading from Robert J. Sawyer's The Oppenheimer Alternative today. And I see is he is here. Hi, Rob. Welcome, welcome, welcome to First Chapter Fun. And I know we will have a lot of people asking you questions about your fabulous book and about how you write and how you think and about how you come up with these truly amazing stories. And which reminds me, if you have questions for Robert J. Sawyer, do leave them. He will answer them on Facebook on First Chapter Fun. Um, we do archive our videos, our first chapter readings, but for some reason here on Instagram, the, 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 the comments vanish as soon as we put them on IGTV. 
um, the ephemeral nature of the universe. Um, it is not so ephemeral on Facebook where the comments remain. So if you have a question for Robert J. Sawyer about how he thinks or how he works or how he comes up with his ideas or how much research he does or how possible it is the things that um, he is predicting or wondering about, ask him on Facebook because the questions will remain there. And Rob is saying, cool, ask away. So um, welcome Robert J. Sawyer to First Chapter Fun. So um, quickly, if we get booted out of either of these technologies, Facebook or Instagram, it is not, um, it is not you, it's us. And we will come back and redo the entire first chapter flawlessly, of course, um, if we get booted out. So again, these are all saved. This is episode 85, if you can believe it, of First Chapter Fun, 85, which is amazing and awesome and wonderful. And we're already planning into July of next year, if you can imagine. So mark your calendars if you have calendars. We don't need calendars because all the days run together anyway, don't they? But we know when Tuesdays and Thursdays at 11.30 a.m. ESTR because that is time for the first chapter of a wonderful new book. So I'm looking at your, uh, Robert J. Sawyer is on Facebook as well. Wonderful. Hi, Jamie. Hi, Beth. Hi, Lynn. She's saying heavy rain and thunderstorms in upstate New York. Hi from Nina. Hi, Susan and Lynn. Um, Allie. And yes, I know, 85. Yay. That is, that is great. Um, let, without further ado, there's been a lot of ado this morning, but there's weather and there are special guests and there are things to talk about as always and welcoming you all to this 85th episode. So amazing to say this 85th episode of first chapter fun. So let me tell you a little bit about Robert J. Sawyer. If you have, if you know anything about science fiction writing or anything about the science fiction world, you certainly know Robert J. Sawyer. If you don't, um, we are so thrilled to, um, <laughs> Jen says, love the ado. I do too. Um, we are so thrilled to have Rob Sawyer here today. Um, he's quite a stellar presence in science fiction world. Let me tell you a little bit about him. Robert J. Sawyer has been called the Dean of Canadian Science Fiction by the Ottawa Citizen and Canada's answer to Michael Crichton um, by, the, or by the Toronto Star. So that is as high as it gets in the Pantheon. A member of both the Order of Canada and the Order of Ontario, Rob is one of the only eight writers in history to win all three of the world's top awards for Best Science Fiction Novel of the Year. The Hugo, which he won in 2003 for The Hominids, The Nebula, which he won in 1996 for The Terminal Experiment, and the John W. Campbell Memorial Award, which he won in 2006 for Mind Scan. The ABC TV series Flash Forward was based on his novel of the same name. So I hope you have seen that wonderful series. So the book is The Oppenheimer Alternative. It is from Ark Manor. Press. It is available right now, and we are reading today um, with the kind permission of Ark Manor and Robert J. Sawyer, who we are thrilled uh, is joining us this morning. Hi, Bonner. Welcome, welcome. Um, and Hannah saying, hey, Jean. Hey, Robin. So nice to see you all today. And um, Hannah is saying incredible accolades. The, you know, the Hugo and the Nebula and the Campbell Award that that's a big deal that's as big as it gets in science fiction and so to win all three of them is quite astonishing hey janet welcome all right so let me tell you a little bit about the oppenheimer alternative let me show you that cover it's so difficult to show on facebook um, it's just hard to get it to show up um, but you can see j robert oppenheimer's luminous blue eyes and you will hear more about that as the book progresses. Uh, so let me tell you a little bit about the book. Uh, writing with a sense of wonder that hasn't prevailed since the days of Heinlein, says books in Canada, best novel Hugo and Nebula Award winner Robert J. Sawyer brings you a truly science fictional work of alternate history. Yes, and Robert is saying R at RJS into is me. Robert J. Sawyer, Robert J. Sawyer in Toronto. So there, you now know the code you see already watching First Chapter Fun and talking about science fiction. We've already had a code and the decoding. So what more can you possibly want? 
yes, you can want more about the Oppenheimer alternative. So a little bit more about the book. While J. Robert Oppenheimer and his Manhattan Project team struggle to develop the A-bomb, Edward Teller wants something even more devastating, a weapon based on nuclear fusion, the mechanism that powers the sun. But Teller's research leads to a terrifying discovery. By the year 2030, the sun will eject its outermost layer, destroying the entire inner solar system, including Earth. Okay, talk about stakes. There are some stakes. After World War II ends, Oppenheimer's physicists combine forces with Albert Einstein, computing pioneer John von Neumann, and rocket engineer Werner von Braun, the greatest scientific geniuses from the last century, racing against time to save our future. Meticulously researched and replete with real-life characters and events, the Oppenheimer Alternative is a breathtaking adventure through both real and alternate history. So you can see how cool this is. This is a cool book, right? And it's going to be fascinating and wonderful and full of insight and full of research um, and full of amazing things that you never knew and you never knew you wanted to know and then you'll be terrified that it's just a story. Um, as we say um, in our video, which you should watch, it's just a story until it isn't, you know, depending on what you mean by true. So let me set the scene for you with this because the first the first scene, the first chapter um, of this book begins in 1936. Chapter one is 1936. So you don't remember what it was like in 1936, and I don't either, but barely. Um, so let me set the scene for you. This is Jean Harlow and William Powell and Myrna Loy were at the movies. It was the second Thin Man that came out in 1936. President, and there was Swing Time. Fred and Ginger's movie Swing Time was on. President Roosevelt. Franklin Roosevelt had just been elected for his second term. King Edward had abdicated, just abdicated, to marry Wallace Simpson. Um, Gone with the Wind was published. Sunscreen was invented. And in power then were Hitler, Mussolini, and Stalin. And in that milieu begins the Oppenheimer Alternative. And here is chapter one, 1936, and it begins with a little epigraph from the physicist Robert R. Wilson, who says, I have to explain about Oppie. About every five years, he would have a personality crisis. He would change his personality. I mean, when I knew him at Berkeley, he was the romantic, radical, bohemian type of person, a thorough scholar. And so begins. And Beth is saying 1936 is when my parents were born. Okay, so you have it in context. Um, now let's put ourselves at a cocktail party in 1936, where we meet for the first time J. Robert Oppenheimer, who will turn out to be the head of the Manhattan Project in the research for the atomic bomb. I mean, fascinating moment. Chapter one of the Oppenheimer alternative. You're bad luck for me, said Hokan Chevalier. I hope you know that. Robert Oppenheimer looked at his friend seated next to him on the pink and green living room couch as the party bustled around them. Oppie's sense was the exact opposite. Hope had brought him nothing but good fortune, including getting him into this offbeat rooming house here on Shasta Road. Oh? Absolutely. When I go places without you, I'm considered the attractive one. Oppenheimer made a small chuckle. Chevalier, who had just turned 35, was three years his senior and was indeed movie star handsome, gallant as befitted his last name and long of face with wide spaced eyes and sandy hair swept back in a slight pompadour. By comparison, Oppie knew he himself was scrawny, his tall body angular, his coarse black hair, a wild nimbus, and his duck-footed gait awkward. One friend had described it as a constant falling forward, as if he were forever tumbling into the future. See that one over there, continued Hope with a subtle knob. She hasn't glanced at me since we got here, but you, Chevalier shook his head in good-natured exasperation. It's those damn eyes of yours, I tell you, fucking opals. 
Oppy was used to compliments about his pale blue eyes. He often heard them called transparent or luminous, but this metaphor was new to him. He smiled as he turned to look at the woman Hope had indicated, and, and oh my God, he'd seen that lovely face before. He was sure of it, but where? Wow, said Oppy softly. Wow, indeed, agreed Hope, and she keeps looking your way. You should go over and say hello. I, um... Oh, for Pete's sake, Robert, go. You study the mysteries of the universe. Girls are simple by comparison. Hope taught French literature at the University of California's Berkeley campus. Oppie was a professor of physics there. Normally, members of such diverse faculties would have little to do with each other, but Oppie loved French poetry, and the two men had become great friends. One advantage Hope had was that he had a lot of female students. He'd married one, in fact. Whereas in Robert's circles, physics, women were rare. Come on, said Hope. Give me a story to tell Barb when I get home. Go try your luck. Luck. Einstein said that God didn't play dice with the universe, but then again, God probably wasn't itching to get laid. All right already, Oppie said, unfolding himself from the couch. Of course, he couldn't just go up and say hello, but Mary Ellen, his landlady, was swirling by in one of her floor-length batik dresses. She threw many parties, often as fundraisers. This one was for the Republicans in Spain, or maybe it was for the Spanish nationalists, whoever the good guys were anyway. Oppie had come downstairs from his room for donuts and drinks, not the cause. Say, Mary Ellen, I wonder if you might... Robert, so good of you to pull your nose out of your books and join us, but your glass is empty. Let me, no, no, I'm, I'm fine. But if you could, he gestured feebly at the young woman seated by the fireplace. Ah, said Mary Ellen, her face splitting in a grin. Yes, of course. She took Oppie's hand and pulled him across the crowded room. Jean, she said, and the woman looked up. This is my best tenant. Oh, hush, Fred, you know I love you, too. This is Robert. He teaches physics. Robert, Jean here, is studying to be a doctor. Mary Ellen managed, managed to make an Art Deco chair appear out of nowhere and maneuvered Robert onto it so that he was facing Jean. Now let me get you a drink. A doctor, said Oppie, impressed, smiling at Jean. Yes, a psychiatrist in particular. Jean's voice was warm. She was, as he'd noted from across the room, beautiful, even more so close up. I'm fascinated by Freud, she continued. Do you know his work? Well, well, look at those dice. Six the hard way. I do indeed. In fact, I know Ernest Jones. Oh my, said Jean, really? Yes, we uh, met when I was at Cambridge in 1926. Jones, a great friend of Freud, was the first English-speaking practitioner of psychoanalysis and be had become its chief proponent in the English world. My God, tell me everything about him. Mary Ellen fluttered by again, giving Oppie a bourbon and a wink, then went upon her way. Well, said Oppie, he was practicing in Harley Street. As he spoke, he continued to study her smooth, classically beautiful face and striking green eyes, emeralds to his opals. Jean wore her short hair black and had a slight dimple in her chin. She was probably a decade younger than he was. They talked for most of an hour and the conversation slipped easily from topic to topic. He was enthralled by that hauntingly familiar beauty of hers and by her nimble mind and ready wit, and yet she was mercurial. One moment she'd seem animated and boisterous, the next fragile and sad. Still, against a noisy background of someone banging away on the piano, dozens of overlapping conversations, and the clink of glasses, he listened attentively, though at one point he had to hold up his hand to stop her. My family, she'd said, had moved out here from Massachusetts just before the crash, and you were in an accident? She looked at him for a moment, puzzled. No, the stock market crash. Oppie shook his head slightly. The stock market crash of 1929, the beginning of the Great Depression. Oh, ah, uh, yes, yes, of course. You don't know, do you? Jean looked amazed. Where have you been? Born with a silver spoon in your mouth, were you? Well, uh, uh, I mean, my father did all right. 
Then he added, as if somehow it explained his ignorance, he invested, but mostly in art, not stocks. She tilted her head again, and the light from the porcelain table lamp hit her just so, and he suddenly realized where he'd seen that face before. Oppie's favorite book was Baudelaire's poetry collection, Les Fleurs de Mal. The shape of Jean's face and the curve and length of her nose were identical to that of the woman in the etching accompanying Baudelaire's heartbreaking Montmartre in the glorious 1917 edition. He frowned, ousting the thought. That etching was gruesome. The woman's head had been severed, a beauty cut down in the flower of youth as her older lover traveled the world. The evening was ending, and Oppie, four drinks in, was ready to ask the young lady out. And so, Miss Tatlock, she said, and the crisp syllables hit him like bullets. Are you related to John Tatlock? He's my father. John Tatlock, the medievalist at Berkeley? Yes, why? Do you know him? Oh, yes, thought Oppie. John Strong Perry Tatlock was an expert on Geoffrey Chaucer, a towering presence at the Berkeley Faculty Association meetings, a loud voice often heard booming across the faculty club dining hall, and a raging anti-Semite. That wasn't unusual at Berkeley. When Robert had tried to get his student Bob Serber a job there, the physics chairman had said that having one Jew in his department was quite sufficient. But damn. Ah, said Oppie, his stomach nodding. He hadn't mentioned his own name, Oppenheimer. He got up from the funky chair. Well, he said sadly, it was nice meeting you. He made his way toward the staircase that led up to his lonely room. Oh, boy meets girl, what happens? Oh no, Robert Oppenheimer meets the woman of his dreams um, and it is not possibly going to work out with her father being anti-Semitic and J. Robert Oppenheimer being J. Robert Oppenheimer, but what is going to happen and as we know from reality and from Robert J. Sawyer's brilliant mind, uh, something more will happen. So this is um, an alternative history, an alternate history, an alternative science fiction history of what might have happened or what might have been prevented or what could still happen. And you can hear the research, you can hear the reality, you can hear how people really talked in 1936 and how people thought in 1936 and the gorgeous subtext of what is happening in the world at that time that most people didn't know. That's the cool part about history, right? We, we know what happened. The author knows what happened, and we can then extrapolate, extrapolate what might have happened if the world had just gone another way. So it's full of irony and subtext and possibilities and philosophy and science and all those kinds of things, all in this one book, The Oppenheimer Alternative by Robert J. Sawyer, which is available right now and it is fascinating and riveting and you know important important especially in these days when science is under such um, uh, scrutiny and battle and controversy and I mean, science is science physics works you know that's that's the bottom line so anyway the Oppenheimer alternative highly recommended thank you Robert J Sawyer um, for trusting us with your first chapter and trusting us with your novel and congratulations on um, all of your wonderful accolades. And I'm sure people will be rushing to buy your book uh, right now. I do hope so. And that was chapter 85, episode 85 of First Chapter Fun. Now coming up on Tuesday, as we say, and now for something completely different. Coming up on Tuesday, Rhea Fry. You know Rhea Fry. Oh my goodness, uh, she is incredible in this book, Until I Find You, which is going to be one of those difficult books to show on Facebook. Let me show you that. Until I Find You by Rhea Fry uh, on Monday. She is lovely, Rhea Fry. Look her up um, on the internet. Look up Rhea Fry or The Right Way. She does a lot of work in helping young writers to um, make a career of their writing and understand the industry and be better at their craft and know what they're doing. And she's also an astonishing author of domestic suspense, uh, where Until I Find You is about a young woman who's gradually losing her sight, gradually losing her sight. 
and what may happen next. So you will hear all about that um, on Tuesday on First Chapter Fun, right here on Instagram and right here on Facebook at 11.30 a.m. EST every Tuesday and Thursday. We are so pleased um, that you came to join us this morning. We are so happy to host Robert J. Sawyer, one of the icons of science fiction alternate history world. And we are so thrilled to see all of you, as always, every Tuesday and Thursday. Please come see us next week. Please stay together. Please stay safe, stay kind, and we will see you next time.